Out of the Ordinary Insights, brought to you by Investec Specialist Bank. Hello and welcome to this week's Captains of Industry. And this week our captain is Clive Smith, who is CEO of Tsebo Outsourcing Group. Clive, uh, Tsebo Outsourcing, it's described as a black empowered company, outsourcing. Uh, tell me more about this company. David, our, our group is a fairly passionate organization. We, we employ around 19,000 people on the subcontinent um, of Africa. We've turned over, this year we'll, we'll knock on 4 billion turnover. We service around 1,000 customers and clients on approximately four to 5,000 sites between Cape Town and Saudi Arabia. Okay, so that's a, a nice context. Let's say I'm one of your customers, a medium-sized customer in your business, an important customer. What will your business look like to me? What's the kind of thing I get from you? Well, we, would, we, we started off the business as a food company. We're a catering company. Our, our best known brand in the industry is FedEx, the catering company. We own a couple of other catering companies. We own TS Africa, a high, high end market company that operates in the same space. Equality Reef Services operates in the mining sector. We own Drake and Skull, a facility services company, um, a cleaning company called Seba Cleaning, and a couple of other peripheral brands which lie on the, on the side of it. So we'd invariably take away some which is core to us and non core to you and take the hassle and, and give you a higher quality service and deliver for you those services to support your business. Let's take FedEx, that's a name I know, and uh, probably eaten their food and been at their functions and so on. Explain how that became this company. We started the, the, the company in 1971 as FedEx. It was Federal Forks Belecans, Imperial Cold Storage, the company who owned all the oh, food is that manufacturing. Where that comes from? That's I thought where it, it comes was just from. a made up name. No, it was Federal Forks Belecans, which, which is a Sunlam investment company, mm. became ServeGrow later on. And those two companies needed an outlet for their food, and their first contract was UCT in Cape Town, Gee. which we still do the catering of the students today. Um, mm. We lost it for a couple of years in between, but we do it now. Mm. And through the years, that then grew to become a catering company for captive markets. Um, in Just explain that, a captive market. If you go to a high street and, and go to, to a mall, you'll find catering companies or food companies who you'll, you'll go and buy from plastic menu companies where they serve food to general population and you have a choice of different brands you can in go fact, to. In fact, they have a, a hall uh, where you've got them all lined up next to Absolutely. each other and you can choose. Absolutely. Now, we chose in, in our industry to go to captive markets. And it's a very different industry. We can't provide the same menu every single day to the same people. It's menu fatigue is our biggest single item we've got to manage, and that puts complexity into the business. Mm. We've got to make it at home away from home and give variety, something exciting, and yet be friendly and give you service levels. And that makes it a very different business that we're in. I in, remember in being, at, food. being at boarding school, yep. and I once saw, went into the kitchen uh, illegally, probably to steal food, and I saw the, the menu on the wall, because yeah. we didn't know how they did it, and it was a three week menu. Yep. Every dish, every m component of every meal was planned, and it was a three week cycle. Depending on, on the industry that we service, we'll have a, have a menu cycle. If you know in a hospital, the average patient stays four to five days, they work on a seven or eight day cycle. Mm. If you're on in a factory where it's the same people come into exactly the same canteen every single day, you'll work on a four week menu cycle. If you're in a corporate office where the people have got a choice of environments they go to, it might be a two week menu cycle. Mm. So that's one of the ways we manage the menu fatigue and that's what puts the complexity into the business. Of course, you use the word captive market. Now that could be another word for monopoly, monopoly in reverse. Once you've got these guys, you've signed the contract, uh, you haven't got competition. We haven't got competition, but what we have got is we only have got them for an hour or an hour and a half a day, for maybe two day parts. So we cover the overheads for 365 days a year, but we only have to service for, for an hour, an hour and a half. We feed them lunch. But in terms of quality, they haven't got an immediate alternative if they don't like what you Easy to get complacent and let stand and It slip? is very easy, but the market is highly competitive. So they'll um, reject the contract next they year? They reject the contract. We have contracts which, which range between one year, two years to three years in that sector. Mm. And invariably, our, our biggest competition is what we call the brown bags. So if our, if our quality goes home, people bring lunch tins. Um, or, they, or they go outsource or most delivery comes in. So yes, quality is a, is a big issue for us. And when you fatigue off that quality becomes a sec a, the other item which, which keeps them to the play. Do you do hospitals? We do a lot of hospitals. Now, I have some experience of hospitals recently. My mother fell, broke her shoulder and went to the hospital and the food comes in. I won't say which hospital, so you don't have to explain whether it's you or not. It's always cold. Always. That's not us. Well, <laughs> I, I'm just saying. But who gets blamed? Uh, you know, it's a bit like uh, uh, the car manufacturer. Something goes wrong with the radio and the car manufacturer says, no, 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 the radio is not us. No, 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 it is you. It's in your car. If you're doing the catering, it's your food. 
you must surely try to manage that kind it's of It's the quality. biggest single problem in, in, in healthcare um, catering. We, we service most of the, of the major health groups. We, we got dominant market share in that market. The, the challenge is to get the food from the, from the ward to the patient in time. Yeah. And invariably if it gets to the patient, there's various, various methodologies as well as the microwave on site to reheat it. But the challenge is if the sisters are working with the patient, that delays you a couple more minutes. Yeah. So often there are operational issues in the, in the healthcare system yeah. which, which affect that food quality. I'm not blaming you, but uh, I think it's easy for people to blame you. Generally, the quality issues, you, in, in the catering business generally, it's, it's clearly this uh, balance between having quality, but you've got to keep your costs down. Yes. Um, we're a very low margin business. Um, and another sector about the, the business which, which affects us um, heavily is we, so we, we employ up sort of upwards of 19,000 people in the country. There's a huge wage differential in the, in the company, in the country, between the low end income earners and the high end income earners. And we, we sit with, with salary increases of CPI plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 percent on average, and we have done for the last five to 10 years. So we've got margin pressure on food, and there's a global food issue, yeah. and we've got margin pressure on salaries. Yeah. Um, and we understand that, that, that from a social responsibility perspective, that journey is nowhere near an end. Yeah. Um, we've got a long way to go to get out our employees and the, and the low end people in the country to the right level of standard of living and to get a proper middle class in the country. And therefore, cost pressures are something we've been dealing with for the last four to five years, maybe 10 years. And I think we can expect them to last the next sort of five to six years. I would think being the kind of business you are and starting off in FedEx originally, uh, you've, you've been around the block, you've learned some tricks. What are some of the principles that you've learned in this business? Every day is a new day. You can, can't count on your success yesterday or last year. You've got to do it all again today. Whoever your people are, if wherever you, they are. If you compare it to a sports team, um, one bad match, the coach is about to get fired. One bad plate of food, we're about to get fired. Mm -hmm. um, one bad function, we have our reputation goes down. It takes you forever to rebuild the reputation. So that's one of the, the lessons. If we, we look at how we, we maintain our relationships with our clients on all our sectors, whether we're doing cleaning facilities or, or, or catering, we've got four figures that, I, that I've sort of summarized the two. Number, item number one is relationships. Mm. Item number two is cost. Item number three is quality. And item number four is environment. So we take food for et cetera. If the relationship with your client is, is at the correct level and strategically correct, that you understand what his objectives are, what your objectives are, and you have a failure on cost or a failure on quality, you get a chance to, to, to repair it. Mm. If you have a relationship issue, you're history and you're gone. Um, so we've got to go to the other three factors on cost. What we've done over the last couple of years and say the last sort of 10 years, we've been investing heavily in IT systems. We've got refined procurement systems. We've got refined payroll systems. We've got systems around wastage. We can tell if, it, if one of our unit managers buys from the wrong place and how much they've declined in potential savings or mm. potential margin. Mm. We've got portion control systems. Uh, if you take a simple example on a plate of food with your, your wife at home, if she dishes up a, a beef stew and she gives you one extra piece of beef, um, an average portion of beef is 200 grams. Mm. 200 grams is, is one fifth of a kilogram. So if I, and you, there's 10 pieces normally to a portion. If I give you one extra portion, I'm 10% out on your portion control. 10% mm. out on, on, on five people is 100 grams. It's a highly, highly sensitive but business. But similarly, if you give me a little bit less than okay. my 200 grams, I'm going to say, hey, you know. Uh, That's exactly right. In is. a lot of these places where you've got, uh, you've booked 14 meals and there are 14 people, number 14 perhaps doesn't get what he should. He doesn't can't get what he should. Um, then we'll have a quality issue yeah. in, our, in our business. Mm. So we don't seem to have a, have a have a major issue on that end of it and we are very very strict in the way we manage it and the disciplines we put in place. What about health issues which I think in 1971, 71 you said when FedEx started, started, you know perhaps a different kind of pressure now. Uh, I, I've seen this in the school environment where you know the, the, the dietitian comes and designs a wonderful balanced meal and the boys won't eat it. You can't practically deliver it so that the client doesn't like it. Health issues are a consistent risk of ours. You might ask why the a customer might choose us or as opposed to choosing a smaller operator, etc. That's one of the key reasons. You come to us, you're going to get sustainable systems behind it. Our group has got ISO 9000, ISO 14000, ISO 18000 accreditation in different sectors of the business. But it's not just the, the uh, quality of the food, it's the kind of food. So, for example, the classic burger and chips or... Uh, no, I know, burgers can be healthy. It yes. depends how you do it. And chips can be healthy yes. too, as opposed to being soaked in fat. Sugar, 
I mean, sugar has now been identified as a really big health issue, which it wasn't before. It was just a sweetener that you used. Yet, if your customer says, no, 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 we, we want these things, uh, how do you handle that? If a customer wants it, they will they'll receive it. Hmm. Um, but we have got alternative offerings across our, our spectrum of, of, of range of products. We offer clients certain products where we will show them how many kilojoules there are, what the fat content is in certain of the meals, hmm. and they can choose and they can eat healthily. Um, and they can choose a balanced lifestyle from it. So in certain sectors of the market, we offer that and that the client can have it as one of our product choices. Mm. Um, we've had that for many, many years. Um, our first one, our first launch of a product like that, if I can recall, goes back to sort of the late 80s, yeah. when we gave healthy alternatives in, in the process. You, you mentioned being in the continent of Africa beyond South Africa. That must have been fascinating to get that going. Well, we've, we've, we, we aren't deeply into the continent. We're fairly well into the continent, but we're not deeply into it. Um, well, give me an example. Our strategy is to get into it. Um, to, more, to a higher extent. We've done project work in the continent. We've, we've supported mines, DRC, Malawi, um, Uganda, right through the continent we've done single project work. As far as the, the SADC countries are concerned, we, we're the market dominant player in most of those countries. We did a lot of work in Namibia, mm. Mozambique. Um, what about supply issues there? Because the big South African retailers and caterers, they've got very good distribution chains and so on. I remember being in Zambia, for example, in the hotel I was staying at. All the food came from South Africa, not from Zambia. Depending, depending on where you are, will, will depend how it gets there. An example of that we can give you is, is we did a project up on the northern coast of Mozambique. We shipped all the food up by barge. So, so every couple of days a barge would arrive. Hmm? That barge would, 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 would come out of Mputu and that barge would arrive and, and that's how we get our supply. So logistics and supply chains is one of the issues that we deal with and it's one of the things that we have to overcome and we are, we'll get around it. Our mm. procurement departments deliver to the, to, the, to the sites wherever they are. What's the biggest, toughest thing facing the business at the moment? I mean, I know costs are difficult, uh, the balances that we have to have, but beyond that in the South African economy, what, what's facing you and worrying you? Uncertainty with our customers. Um, we cross all the sectors. So whether it be the mining sector, whether it be the healthcare sector, the manufacturing sector, the corporate market sector. Um, so, so much as an economist will use the construction industry as an indicator, we can see the indicators coming through the sectors. Um, when, the, when the motor industry was in trouble end of 2008, we got, we got a letter from one of the motor manufacturers saying we're closing the plant two weeks early and we're opening four weeks later. So we, our business suffers Mm. when our customers suffer. Mm. And we've got to live that journey with our customers. We've got to, we've got to walk that path with it. So the, so the biggest single item, I think, which keeps us awake as, a, as executives in our business is anticipating those trends, mm. living those trends with the customers, and trying to forecast those trends in the customers' businesses so we're proactive for them. Mm. If we can be proactive for them, we can, we can help them engage and deliver their business better. And that, that gives us a relationship. Fascinating stuff. Uh, we're going to pause there. We're going to a short break. More from Clive Smith, the CEO of Sebo Outsourcing Group, when we get back.